Hi there. Welcome to our next GPC learning module. The topic of this module is called deep practice. And um, the reason we're presenting this module at this time of year is uh, the never ending search for the highest quantity of quality repetitions. Just as a brief outline of what this module will cover, again, uh, these modules are presented to our uh, students, our athletes, our families of athletes, and to other coaches to try to get us all on the same page so that we're all sort of speaking the same language as we move along through the weeks of the winter months. As a brief outline for this module, we would like to study the concept of practice, which by definition is the act of rehearsing a behavior over and over or engaging in an activity again and again for the purpose of improving or mastering it. However, the thesis of this presentation will be that it takes more than simple practice. It takes a certain kind of practice. Talent alone is not enough to help us achieve our lofty goals in the game. And what the argument of this presentation will be is that it takes a great deal of deliberate training as well. Great talent married to great training will always lead to excellent skill development. And so really, as a, as a team, we need to better understand what real practice feels like. And we will be spending our next weeks together with a better understanding of what real practice is. In this presentation, we'll be looking at the work of two key researchers in the last 20 years. Uh, one, Mr. Anders Ericsson, who in the early 90s wrote the famous 10,000 hour theory. Uh, this was a theory that suggests that uh, great performers in any discipline require about 10,000 hours of deliberate practice. And then uh, a more contemporary Daniel Coyle in recent years has written a few books, uh, one famous one called The Talent Code. And in this, he uh, traveled around the world searching out these talent hotbeds and asking the question of what makes these people so talented in this particular area. And uh, interestingly, both he and Erickson come to agreement on the concept of these people are immersed in deep practice. So without further ado, let's dive into this idea and figure out what is deep practice. So in the early 90s, uh, Erickson discovers, quote unquote, that um, basically great performance, he did a study on violinists and chess players in various sports, and uh, he found that all of the best performers had approximately 10,000 hours of deliberate practice under their belt by the time they achieved mastery. Um, people who were simply good at things had about seven or 8,000 hours. People who weren't very good at things only accumulated three to 4,000 hours. And again, the core concept was this idea that they had developed deliberate practice. And by, ne by definition, in, in Erickson's world, deliberate practice is characterized by planning, which means that a person organizes their work and has a plan. Uh, knowledge, which means that they have good, clear concepts of what to do. Concentration and dedication, which means that great deliberate practicers have a higher attention span. They're able to concentrate and be focused more than others who are sip, who are easily distracted. Um, deep practice, uh, deliberate practice, sorry, according to Erickson, has a great deal of repetition. And so great practicers have a strong tendency to practice a lot. And deliberate practice involves a tremendous amount of feedback. And this, in Erickson's world, means that uh, great performers have great coaching and peer support surrounding them. And the last component of deliberate practice that Erickson discovered um, was the idea that great practicers do a great deal of self-reflection. And this is a tendency to self-regulate our own learning and to be able to reflect at the end of a session, whether on the drive home or the walk out of the facility or so on, and kind of look back and say, okay, yeah, I did that well. I'm going to do this a little better next time. Okay, I can't wait for my next practice. And so just to sum up Erickson's work, deliberate practice is characterized by planning, knowledge, concentration, repetition, feedback, and self-reflection. More recent times, Daniel Coyle wrote uh, The Talent Code. And again, in this, in this work, he traveled around the world to various talent hotbeds, like baseball players from Curaçao, or football soccer players from Brazil, uh, tennis players from Russia, uh, violinists from a small uh, music camp in the Adirondacks. Um, numerous talent hotbeds where, for some uncanny reason, tremendous amounts of talent was emerging from these small pockets. And so he'd go to these places and study them. And what he found was there was a common trait to all of them. Again, it's this idea of deep practice. In all of these talent hotbeds, they were able to achieve a level of training that was simply deeper than the others who were training a similar skill. So baseball players in Florida 
couldn't compete with the baseball players in Curacao because the baseball players in Curacao trained in a certain way, which just got them into a deeper, um, deeper talent level. And so the first component of the talent code is that um, great practicers are always involved in deep practices. This really means, according to Coyle, full immersion in the joy of practice and training. They, pe these people seemingly just love working hard. And a central concept in Coyle's work is this idea of myelin, which we'll define in a little bit. Um, but basically, myelin is the insulation that wraps around our neural circuits and grows according to certain signals that are being sent from the brain. So it's the biology of talent development effectively, which is that every time our brain sends a signal in the golf world, let's say um, elbow bent, um, every time we send that signal, it actually reinforces itself and makes it easier to send the next time. And so if you send the signal over and over and over, you effectively build a tremendous amount of myelin in your nervous system, which when under pressure, you're able to send these signals very cleanly. Uh, deep practice, according to Coyle, is really the building of myelin. The second concept that Coyle found in all of these talent hotbeds was the idea of ignition. And this means basically that athletes or uh, performers were extremely motivated from a number of sources. Number one, they were motivated from within this intrinsic motivation, which is critical skill development. But they also had ignition from things like coaches or their environment or past successes. So for, for instance, in Brazil, the soccer players were inspired by Pele before them or Ronaldinho before them and so on. And so when they've seen these past successes, they were more motivated than, and to know that, yeah, I can make it too. Um, the environment is such that, uh, and, and Coyle talked a lot about how coaches would be able to bend environments. Again, the Brazilian football players famously could turn a, a huge soccer field into a very small surface. Uh, they call it a game called futsal. And in so doing, they were able to learn very touchy uh, uh, ball control skills, uh, which when then expanded to the big field, made them exceptionally strong at controlling the ball and making small passes. Um, a Brazilian tree. Um, and then, of course, these having this idea of ignition coming from great coaching and great peer support as well. All these things we see as well in Ericsson's work. Lastly, uh, what Coyle found in the code is that great, great performers and those who want to deep practice were in for the long term, a long term commitment to the process. They understand that mastery takes time and that, that you don't always get better immediately. They weren't searching for in the golf analogy. On this next swing, it better work, otherwise I'm out. They're always willing to just indulge in the process. Oh, if it doesn't work this time, I know it's eventually going to work. I trust this concept of practice takes time. Um, and in so doing, obviously, they, they reap tremendous rewards because they have the patience to allow changes to affect. And so in the conclusion of Coyle's work, really at the end of the day, Skill development is all about growing myelin through deep practice. And just like Erickson before him, the idea is the more myelin you build, the stronger your practice is and the stronger your skill will be in the end. Now, in both of these theories, it's come under uh, somewhat of fire as uh, researchers have proven, of course, that it's not always 10,000 hours and that uh, a very short person isn't going to put 10,000 hours of basketball training in and dominate the key. Um, but that obviously talent has something to do with this. But our theory would be instead that let's marry talent to deliberate practice. In every, especially in golf, we can, we can be tested in so many unique ways. Uh, one person can hit it far and another person can be down in the greens and so on. So whatever the talent is, let's marry that to some deliberate practice, to some very deep practice, and watch a skill develops at a much higher level. Irregardless of the number of thousands of hours that it takes, let's just agree that deliberate practice will always beat ordinary practice. And so it is in our interest, without question, to make our practice as deliberate or deep as possible moving forward. And just to sum up uh, the researchers, what they would suggest, deep practice really is practice with a greater purpose. And so we encourage our players to always plan out the practice, make sure you know what you need to do, get lots of feedback, get lots of repetitions, always concentrate, have purpose, understand why you're there and what you're doing, resist the temptation to be distracted, and reflect after our sessions. Derek Jeter recently retired from baseball, but left us with a nice quote when he said that there may be people that, more, that have more talent than you do, but there's no excuse for anyone to work harder than you do. And again, we're asking not only for some hard work, but for a deliberate form of hard work, uh, a, a form of hard work that also includes this, like, these concepts of deep practice. 
you'll be seeing this form over the next uh, couple of weeks as we start to ask players as they leave a session to evaluate the depth of their training. You'll be scoring your practice sessions by responding to the following statements and you rate yourself on a scale of one to five. So in the practice session I just had, was I intense? Did I give 100% effort and full attention to the process the whole time? And we'll be on our ratings and in some cases we might give ourselves a three or a four or a five depending on the circumstances. The goal here, of course, will be to get high scores in all of these categories. And by keeping score, we'll be able to hold ourselves accountable for the depth of our practice. Second category, we'll mark ourselves on engagement. Was I present as I worked? Was I unemotional for the results, but fascinated with the process? We'll measure the practicality of the session. Did I work on skills that are relevant when I perform? I said I was going to improve my wedge play, and I spent the whole session hitting drivers. Well, that obviously is impractical work. Uh, how many repetitions did I get? Did I embrace the value of getting as many repetitions of the skill that I can, all the while realizing that the quality repetition always trumps the quantity repetition? Clarity. Did I understand the day's goal? Was I clear about my plan, where I fit this into the larger picture? Did I have a clear intention for what I was doing? Reachfulness. Did I push myself to the edge of my abilities? Great practicers aren't afraid to hit errors. A, great, a sign of a great practice session may be shots hitting the side walls of the dome, maybe balls going off the side of the club. These would be a great sign of reaching to a new limit. We reach a little bit past our, our own limits in order to expand our limits. Was I at times struggling in reaching? And then lastly, another thing that Coyle found in all of these talent hotbeds, practice is fun. All the while was challenged and yet enjoying the process. Did I laugh and did I learn? Players give themselves a score of one to five. We get ourselves on a scale of on 35, how did you do? We like to celebrate scores of 30 to 35 as classic deliberate training sessions. Under sc scores under 30 can be effective, but as we start to get down into the low 20s and below, we really need to study how to make practice more efficient. Again, at the end of the winter, it's not going to necessarily be the number of hours spent, but the quality married to the number of hours spent. Look forward to seeing you soon and to talk a little bit more about deep and deliberate practice. Thanks for your attention.